Understanding Salesforce OAuth Device Flow, Explanation and Demo. Welcome to another video in the Security and Identity series. In this one, we're going to be going into the Salesforce OAuth Device Flow, how it fits in, when you'll use it, and we're going to be doing a demo. In previous videos, we've been walking through the number of authentication flows, either using single sign-on or OAuth. And in that case, some of the cases, the human is involved, single sign-on, the human is involved in having a mobile device, and or the human is involved going to a third-party web server, which will authenticate on behalf of the user. On these additional flows, we may have an integration user act call, calling direct. We may have a designated person user coming in through a different process. The one we're gonna be talking about today is device flow. And in device flow, we're gonna have a separate device that is gonna to attempt to make access to, access to Salesforce data, but it needs to act on behalf of a separate user. And then that user will have to um, independently approve that request. So in this case, we have the Salesforce, we have the client, and we have the person, human being, who's gonna be involved with that. And we're gonna walk through the details of that and we're gonna do a demo. So this is an example set of swim lanes which are gonna walk us through the scenario where we have a device. It could be you know, a smart TV, it could be you know, uh, any other device that does not have the ability to have a keyboard, screen, and entry. What it does need to do is to be able to display some form of a code to the user. So, with the, and this device will be calling into Salesforce, acting on behalf of a user. So this is not the device having its own username and password that's fixed to the device. This is where the device will be act with the privileges and capabilities of a specific user who will approve them. So let's start going through the flow. So in this flow, it starts on the right-hand side. We have the device that doesn't have any access. What it will do is it does know to go in on step 1A and go to the Salesforce authentication server. It will be presenting one piece of information called the client ID. This is not the client's secret, just the client ID. So the Device 1A is present the client ID to the auth server, and then Salesforce will return back a user code. This will be a code that is not overly complex, that can be displayed on some limited display screen and read by a human being. So we're gonna it's gonna return a couple of pieces of information, the user code to give to the user a device code, which should be held by the device to ensure that that device and not another device is attempting to reconnect. So this prevents somebody from um, intercepting the auth code and activating on instead of the actual device. And the verification URI, which is the URL that the user will need to go to. So on step 1A, make the request. Step 1B, get the code, and then go into a polling mode. What that means is every certain interval, the device will go check to see if it's been approved. Now, in step three, that user code needs to be communicated to the user who will approve. This could be on a screen, this could be in any form of communication, but it's going from the device to the human. That's why I drew it in purple. This step three is carry that over. Then the human, will go to their, will have their browser or any other secure method, will authenticate and have a valid session. And then they will navigate to the validation URI. Um, and that way they will then be presented with a screen where they type in the verific the, the auth, the user code. Once the user code is added, the user will be notified that it has been approved. Now separately, could be a few seconds, could be a minute or two later, the device is continuing to poll, which means to make subsequent requests. When it does poll again after 
the user has approved the code, then the auth server will return the access token. And then once that happens, then the device can then go to the org instance and start pulling in data. So it starts on the right side with a request for the user code. It switches to the left side where the user approves it. And then it switches back to the right side where then the auth code is requested. We're gonna now walk through a demo. And this demo begins in, begins in Salesforce. In a previous video, I had a connected app and I'm gonna view that connected app. Now a key element is that you need to have checked the box enable for device flow on the connected app. So make sure that you've enabled for connected fl uh, device flow and then you need to wait about 10 minutes for it to propagate. And then you're gonna have your consumer key and consumer secret for the connected app. Now the connected app, because it could be a device that can't necessarily be hold on to its secrets, it only gets the consumer key, the client ID, not the consumer secret. Now what we're gonna be doing is we are going to be as the device, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be making a request to the auth endpoint, the auth server for Salesforce, you'll see the endpoint. We're gonna be doing a post statement and we just need to send two things, the response type of device code and the client ID. Notice this is the client ID and not the client secret. We're gonna send in the client ID and we're gonna send it and authenticate. And you'll notice we immediately get back the user code that can be read to a human typed in any way transmitted. We have a secret device code that needs to be held by this device to prevent another device from having, you know, grab that device code. We have an interval and then we have the request URI. Now I'm gonna take a new window, a new private window and I'm gonna log in. So this is a separate window with no prior session. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna navigate to the verification URL. So that has been provided for me. So I can take the verification URL that came in my code request. And now that I have a valid session, I can paste it. And now the user, the human, is being asked for the code. So what can happen here is that the user code right here, this is then entered in by the human and then they're gonna allow the access. So I'm gonna hit the allow. Okay, and now it's telling me that the device is connected. Now in my original request, I received a device code and I was hitting the OAuth 2 endpoint. Now I'm gonna hit the OAuth 2 endpoint with a grant type of device the same client ID, and I'm gonna use the code, the device code that was presented to me, and then I'm gonna submit. And now the device has successfully received an access token. So there is an access token, it's got the proper scope, and this is now valid for access. So what we have just gone between was the original request here, we then, all we need to pass is a short piece of information to the human. The human then pr proceeded to log in, present the code, and without any other action, the device can make the second request and get the token. So we just saw the step-by-step -step between the device, the human, the mere passing of a small piece of information, and the ability for the device to act on the user's behalf. And that takes you through the, all the details of device flow for OAuth on Salesforce. So keep on diving into devices. Join us again, the same bad time, same bad channel. Make sure you subscribe to the Steve TechArc YouTube channel and there are more videos coming. Have a great day.